go live. All righty. So, uh, welcome everyone to, I think it's our third bat meeting this season. Uh, and really, uh, I want to talk about, uh, well, I want to talk about Ryan, actually, uh, which is a bat target that's just come into view this month. Obviously, it'll be higher next month. Uh, also, I want to catch up on any questions that people might have. This is a chance for folks to answer questions, uh, for me to answer questions. And uh, it might be nice to hear how Andromeda's going. Uh, I know there was quite a flurry of activity on that a while ago. I haven't looked at it recently. Oh, and uh, if Lekebeke, Lekebeke is here, I don't know that he is actually. Uh, we might want to talk about his, uh, he's developed uh, some software for Lucky Imaging, which sounds pretty useful. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plough straight in for 10 minutes in, in a, into Orion. Uh, Orion, right? The most boring nebula because we've all blooming done it, haven't we? We've all shot Orion. Why on earth is Orion anything worth writing home route? Well... Uh, let me just pull up a few things. I did. I I, I actually didn't realise uh, how cool Orion actually is. Um, and the reason it's cool is because it's one of our nearest uh, places where stars are born. I'm hoping, actually, as I ramble on about Orion, I'm kind of hoping that some of you guys will be able to tell me a bit more of the physics about what's going on. But essentially... Inside Orion are three objects that I'd really like us to try and get. Uh, the first is a bow shock. Now, as I said, I'm hoping some clever bat member will tell us exactly what a bow shock is. I'm going to say that solar wind from some star uh, pushes against the magnetic field of another star and creates, I don't know if you can see it, like this shield kind of shape, right? Um, does anyone want to pipe in here? Tell me a bit more detail about bow shocks. All right, so there's them. Maybe someone will laser. That's one thing. Now, the, the, I think this is LL Ori or something. Is that star there, right? Which has got this bow shock around it. I think we will be able to get that. Now, the thing is, there's more of them. There's not just that one, although that's kind of the famous one. Um, I don't know what's going on here, but if I, I think, uh, I think I was just cruising. I did a bit of cruising through um, uh, what people were looking at. And, uh, well, this chap's found the bow shop. I think, I, where, where was it? Oh, Hubble, of course. Here's some Hubble stuff. Hubble, this is a close-up of, of Hubble's image. You see there's, like, stuff going on around here. There's a bow shock here. There's another bow shock around here. Do you see what I mean? I mean, this is Hubble, obviously. But there's quite a lot of these bow shocks. I think, I think they're pretty cool. And, and I noticed one in M43, actually. Uh, so um, M43, you, you know what that is, right? That's the... If Orion is is like, if maybe I can zoom out of this image. If uh, if I zoom out a lot, actually. So here's Orion M4. This is this is a ah my my annoying mouse has made a highlighted thing. So here's Orion M43 is I think of it as like an eye. Someone's maybe being slightly noisy. Someone needs to turn their mic off. Not a big deal. Anyway, I was just cruising around. Cruising around, and I noticed that there's another bow shock just here. Starbase, can you mute, please? Or if one of the bat mods can mute, uh, mute Starbase, that would be good. Or I can have a go. Ding, ding, ding. I'll have a go. Who is it is making the noise? Starbase 84. Starbase. I fixed it. Nah, I'm still doing it, dude. He's gone. Bye bye, Starbase. 
It's probably a good thing I did you that that for you. You could have. There's that scene, isn't there, in Naked Gun where he goes off to the toilet? You know, we wouldn't want that to happen. Anyway, so I was looking at M43. I was just looking around, and there's there's a there's a blooming bow shop there. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Just this little star here. I'm sorry about the yellow box. Uh, and potentially, uh, I noticed some others. And I'm sure if we cruised around Orion, we would found, find more of these bow shocks. Uh, so that's one object in Orion I'd like us to try and get. Uh, then, of course, there is the famous protoplanetary disks. God knows whether we'll get these. I mean, that really... I think this is a job for lucky imaging, right? But, again, maybe if someone wants to chime in, who knows more than I do about astrophysics, uh, I'll just say what I think they are. They are um, stars being born, basically. Um, so the, the, the dark bits... Which actually, this 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 one is probably the the classic, isn't it? Up here, kind of get it bigger. You can see this like little dark disc shape. I don't know whether you can see that very well, but that is the, I believe, the dust and matter and stuff which is uh, in a disc going round a newborn star, and that is the stuff that's going to turn into planets, and uh, eventually life and little aliens. So, um, and there's various shapes. I mean, God knows exactly what all these things are, but it would be amazing if we could manage to bag the hint of a protoplanetary disk. And the third object that's in Orion that I think is really cool is, and I'm going to say this wrong, Herbig Harrow objects. And, and I would love someone to tell me what these are. But uh, the most famous one, because I've actually managed to shoot it, I haven't got my shot actually right now. Oh, this is more, this is more, sorry, I've just, I'm randomly going places. This is, um, this is, I see something interesting there. You know, if you go close up, this is Orion again. Sorry for jumping around. It's just where my, my window took me. Yeah, I was just cruising around there. I noticed some more things going on. Uh, in Orion, which are cool. Uh, anyway, Harry, her big Harrow objects. Let's see if I can find. I wanted to show you just the most famous one. Oh well, here it is. It's in the Pelican Nebula. There's the. Uh, I call it the helicopter, right? Uh, and um, here it is. It's these little two white little jets, and I I believe it's got in there. Hopefully, my mouse it'll go. My, yeah. I believe it's to do with young stars um, lighting up gas or creating jets. Um, I think, I suspect ones like this, are, we're not going to get anything like this, but I think this is a her big harrow object as well. Um, anyway, so these three jewels can be found in the Orion Nebula. And because Orion is so bright, and because we can do narrow banding, so we can get it from the city, uh, I think it's a, actually a great target, even though everyone shoots it. I think we can take it further and surprise people. Um, so, yeah, that's a, that's a new target coming up. Um, so does anyone know anything more than me about these objects? I don't, but I think I caught your bow shock in one of my images already. Awesome. Brilliant. Yeah, well, I think we might be able to find some more too. Um, and, and FYI, Orion is so bright that I'm going to be shooting in some slightly different narrowband uh, wavelengths as well. Uh, so I picked up some two nanometer uh, bandwidth magnesium and... Uh, what's that one that you do on the sun? Is it sodium? Uh, and and I've got some. Uh, it's oh. another. Is it sodium? The sun, the one that people calcium, do. It is. You what? Calcium. 
Yeah, calcium. Yeah, I've got calcium as well. But also people shoot sodium on the sun, I think. I think it's sodium. Um, and magnesium as well is something that I'm trying out. Uh, so it's so bright, I'm hopefully going to go somewhere dark and shoot narrowband in those unusual wavelengths as well. So basically, uh, if we're lucky imaging, I'm hoping, just hoping we might be able to get a protoplanetary disk or at least reveal some of these her big harrow objects. Maybe we can find some more bow shocks. Um, and yeah, I think actually it's a great target. All right. Um, before I move on, does anyone want to uh, say anything about Orion? Um, I would um, I would like to say something about the protoplanetary disk. Awesome. Um, a workmate from here on the observatory um, sh um, sh shot um, Orion with our 36-inch telescope. Only, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I missed the word you said before observatory, and then I heard you say 36-inch telescope. Um, but wow. My work, work mate from the observatory, and he shot Orion with a 36-inch telescope, our biggest telescope from the observatory. Wow. Um, Is, are you going to be shooting stuff for the bat with that telescope? Uh, yes. Oh, wow. Well, this is exciting. Yeah, go, and how did it go? And he shot, if I'm not wrong, he shot lucky imaging or something like this um, because his resolution was better than that what the atmosphere um, allow normally. Wow. And I think he got protoplanetary disks. Awesome. What was his name? Sorry, I, I missed the name. Uh, I didn't uh, say his name. Oh, okay. Um, but, he's, uh, he, hmm? but he's using the observatory. Your, your, is it your, are you a university or? A... No, it's, uh, uh, I don't know how to explain. It's not just hobbyist, but it's a part of, uh, I have to Google the word. Okay. Are you in Germany? Yes. Is it a non-profit? Yes. Um, uh, uh, it's um, part of the ORE in Stuttgart. Okay. It's um, not completely part. It's a little bit independent, but uh, they were, um, get money from the same... Uh, second from the same society brilliant gosh well wow. and uh, yes and i have the equipment to try to get lucky imaging on this telescope too i've got a planetary camera and and that's it for the telescope we have a reducer so we can reduce it from nine meters of focal length to i think about six or seven meters and so we have uh, about um, uh, we have a ratio wow. from focal length to um, um, to objective uh, diameter of about six or seven. Blimey! Wow! Well, that will be amazing. That's I mean that's really exciting. Um, the I have heard of some. No, I'm not. I'm not um, just be a little bit i'm not how can i put this i'm sure you know you know already um but um we have i have heard of some big big scopes uh just having slight collimation problems uh and actually not being able to resolve quite as you know the big mirrors just push in a little you know this the springs that and the things this i don't i don't even know what they are but because the mirrors are so big actually it becomes really tough to keep the collimation on those big big mirrors uh so some occasionally i don't i well i've heard of this once or twice actually they're not able to resolve 
quite as well, just due to column, um, because they go out of collimation. So just keep an eye on that. You'll probably yeah. be fine. But I'm just, I've just heard of it, and you probably, I'm sure you know more than me about it anyway. But that sounds. Yeah, I don't know about uh, the telescopes who ha don't have the uh, perfect collimation, but the, my workmates on the observatory, we are all uh, voluntary workers. As mm. nearby, it's not my real job. I'm a student. Okay. Uh, I'm student at in university, and um, we got for um, we got very good results with this telescope. So it, if it's out of collimation, it's not much. I thought. Awesome. So I uh, yeah. I, I mean, if you get if you got one point two one point uh, no, zero point two zero point one five bow seconds of resolution on planets. Gosh, wow. That does sound good. Awesome. So, I well, brilliant. I'm very glad to have you uh in the bat. That's fantastic. Uh any and what's your actual name by the way? Um Marcus. Marcus. Did I wrote okay. it in uh, in um in Discord it's Alpha Zerstörer X. It's my gaming tag. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but I think I wrote it to the bed. Um, That's okay. Yeah, I just I wanted remember. to know. Thanks, Marcus. Thank you very much. And whoop de doo has just posted uh, in the bat chat, in the bat cave, actually, I believe mm -hmm. his shots of the bow shock, which yeah, is, is pretty. Pr I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. Is this is this whoop de do? Yes, it is. Hi, whoop de do. Uh, this is just some time I spent on it. These are sixty second subs. It might be an hour or two at most. That's I'm awesome. Kind of I got it. And That's what focal awesome. length? Uh, and this is. I'm using an eight hundred millimeter newt with a coma corrector, so I'm at like nine twenty with f of like four point something and change because of the coma corrector. It's a 800 millimeter scope f of four, and so I should be like 4.2 or 4.3 by the time the coma corrector kicks in. Gotcha. Wow, awesome. Sorry, I was trying to do something clever on Discord and failing uh, <laughs> to show everyone, but it's there. It's there in the uh, in the um, in the back cave. Uh, but I've I've cocked something up now. Stop it. Anyway, ah, there we go. All right. Yes, it is Orion, Alan, it is. All right, so, whoop de do. that's fantastic. Uh, anyone else on want to say anything about Orion before we move on? Any Just to say, Rory. Yes. I bet Ben could tell you some wonderful things about bow shocks if you ask him, because he's just arrived. Ooh, put him on the spot. Hey, Ben. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Were you hoping to get away with just sneaking in quietly? Quietly, not having to talk about astronomy. Because <laughs> you spent all week working. Have you been doing stuff at the... So Ben's now left Exeter University, now at uh, Warwick, is it? Yep. Doing post, post-doctorate, is it? Uh, PhD. PhD. Yeah. Are you still using uh, the Keck Observatory? No, we have our, our own stuff now. Ooh. It's run by work. Ooh. All right. So, um, so I've just, uh, you, you missed my brilliant talk about Orion. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you're, you know, I'm sure you'll survive having missed it. But I did ask the question if people knew stuff about bow shocks. Uh, her, her big harrow objects... And of course, protoplanetary disks. And I'm just wondering, and and no one seemed to want to say anything about it. And I don't know a huge amount about them. Do you know anything particular about those things? I mean, I just gave a two sentence, two sentence explanation, really. Yeah, I know kind of a very general summary of how they form, particularly in Orion, where you have kind of these very young stars which have really strong kind of solar winds. There's a lot of material being thrown off of them. And then that interacts with kind of the expansion of gas in the nebula itself. Right, so it's not to do with magnetic fields. 
it's it's mostly it's mostly to do with kind of the material being thrown away from the star interacting with the surrounding material so not directly magnetic fields so if we look at um can you see me by the way uh, yeah so if we look at this one on the screen here mm -hmm. is that is that disc come from that star is that stuff coming off that star or shock waves coming off that star that are hitting material in the... Yeah. So it's kind of like the material itself is just from the surrounding nebula, this kind of interstellar medium, but it's the interaction of the star with that medium which is creating this kind of shock front. So it's, it's, it's heating it up, is it, and, which is why we're seeing it, or making it denser or something? Yeah, making it denser, which then obviously heats it up and increases the emission. It's a little bit like a normal shockwave from a fighter jet flying supersonic. Mm. Yeah. Or more like a capsule uh, at re-entry. A little ah. bit. Yeah. Cool. And, okay, Ben, thank you for that. That's, that is a bit more than I gave. Um, uh, I have a question. One question. One. Oh, yeah. Go on. Uh, so is that interstellar medium, like, uh, moving relative to the star in just one direction that's, like, uh, it's... Uh, why is it, why is it bow from only the one side? Is it, why is it not, like, a circle around the star? It's um, because the star is moving through the interstellar medium. I, I know it only. I, I only know that what I read about Voyager one and two, when they pass our not bow shock or bow wave from our own star. And the um, star creates this is a sun solar wind. It creates a bubble which which is much um, which, which is much bigger than the star itself. It's, yeah, uh, Voyager 1 and 2 passed it a few years ago, and it creates a bubble around this solar system. Um, and this bubble is, uh, the edge of the bubble is where the dense but slow solar wind has the same dynamic pressure than the um, less dense but much faster um, interstellar medium. And if the star travels through the interstellar medium faster than the local speed of sound in this medium, I don't know um, how this happens because I only read this article, um, or, or yeah, not really article. It wasn't a scientific article. It was on um, a website like Heiser or something. And if uh, and so I don't know how there can be a speed of sound because it's very very less density there are normally do uh, there aren't normally shock um, effects um, but in this article it said if uh, the star is faster than the speed of the local speed of sound of the interstellar medium we, we have a bow shock like a supersonic um, mm -hmm. shock I love what I didn't realize was how it's the star that's traveling through the medium that creates it. I love that idea because it gives you a sense that it gives you a sense, doesn't it, of these things moving through space, uh, which which is fantastic, I think. So that star yeah. there is heading well leftwards, basically, at quite a rate of knots. I think that's is that right? This guy is going yes. over here. And uh, the speed of sound is inversely proportional to the density of the medium. So since... God, the, it's going the, blooming fast then. It's because the density of the interstellar yeah. medium is so low to be going faster than the local speed of sound inside that interstellar medium. It is hauling. That is so cool. So That's cool. We can capture movement on. Uh, n it would take years to capture movement on it, probably. Maybe if the bat if the bat's here in fifty years' time, we might get something, huh? Or, spe or spectroscopy. Yeah, based on the location, yeah. it looks like that's the one I just captured in my picture too. So, so that means this little star here is heading this way as some rate of knots as well. Cool, that's cool. 
I'd Excellent. add to this that the uh, the shock is also influenced by the direction the interstellar medium itself is traveling. So uh, if you notice in Orion, these shocks mostly are pointing away from the center. And that's because the hot uh, gas in Orion is moving away from the center. Uh, yeah, it's the Doppler effect. So it's the it's the radiation pressure from the center of Orion kind of blowing this gas away, and then that kind of collides with this interstellar medium. If you think about like how mm. those diagrams of the Earth's magnetic field um, and how that interacts with the sun's kind of solar wind, it kind of blows it backwards. Yeah, that is super cool. All right, well we're well we're going into astrophysics. Her big Harrow objects, Ben. Yes. <laughs> I uh, in the bat cave. Uh, I posted a photo from an from the shockwave of a reentry capsule, um, and I, th I I think it looks similar to that what we saw or what we see in Orion. Yeah, I thought your I thought your I brought it up here. I thought your analogy. There we go. I thought your analogy was really nice, actually, of a capsule coming through. And uh, yeah, it's good. And as Ben points out, it might be the star moving or it might be the the uh, the gas moving against the star. So Ben's Ben's saying that he thinks that all the protoplanetary. No, sorry. All the bow shocks will kind of be pointing towards the center of Orion. Well, not all. He's not. He didn't say that particularly but uh the anyway yeah it's cool or or all the uh, bow shocks uh go in the same direction it uh the uh, question is uh what um what um what effect has more influence the movement of the stars around of our galaxy or the movement of the gas of orion well i don't know um, but I guess there'll be an answer in every case. Uh, sometimes it'll be the star, I guess. Sometimes it'll be fast moving gas around it. And sometimes somewhere in between. Ben. Yes. Her big harrow, her, whatever it is that I can't say, her big harrow objects. Her big harrow objects, yeah. Go on, take me, take, give me a little, I don't know if you can see the screen. I guess Hubble took that one. But there's yeah. there's some in uh, what's, is that what's that is that it's not the Eagle Nebula is it anyway I, there's one a bit like this in the yeah. Pelican Nebula I call it the helicopter <laughs> up here a bit like that one there is it going to come out yeah so what are these so that is when you have either kind of a forming star or a newly formed star so all this gas is kind of collapsing down um and it collapses it collapses down into kind of an accretion disk around the star, so like a, a circular disk of material kind of falling into the star. And due to too complicated to explain, like magnetic fields interacting with stuff, you end up getting these kind of jets of materials shot off um, kind of the poles of this rotation. So you get these two jets coming off of like the North Pole and the South Pole. Uh, All of right. The star. And then that interacts with the interstellar medium, creating these kind of jets. And then at the end of those jets, you also have kind of a bow shock. Oh, this picture really shows that nicely, doesn't it? That bow shock at the end. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And just while we're on this picture, what's this kind of thing here? Not that. Oh, you've gone. That looks uh, like a little... Globule, a little bock globule is um, okay. what I can refer to. Just kind of a little blob of gas, basically, which is kind of collapsing. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Um, okay. Any, any, uh, any more for any more on Orion before we move on? It's exciting, though, isn't it? I think it would be really cool getting some of these things. Um it's both a regular and a lucky imaging target. And as I say, please go mad shooting in different wavelengths. Um, does anyone have anything to say about... Um, uh, this is just something I want to find out, actually. About shooting in um, the magnesium emission line and the sodium emission line. Is, is, there, is there likely to be anything different to see in different wavelengths? Or is it going to 
probably follow our regular hydrogen, oxygen and sulphur emission lines. Nobody knows. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> Which maybe, is good. Maybe dust or center would be brighter. Yeah. Is there any preferred um, wavelengths that we want a lot of data in? Do we want to shoot it all on hot? Do we want to shoot it all on oxygen? Well, I think uh, we're gonna we're gonna open the floodgates and see what we get, essentially. Um, but I, 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 for one, am going to be shooting in slightly weird narrowband wavelengths, and I'm also going to try shooting uh, infrared or near infrared. So I've got a I've got a pro planet filter from Astronomique, which I think is six hundred and forty five nanometer. It's a it's a what are they called? Where it only lets light through from longer wavelengths than six hundred and forty five nanometers. Uh, high yeah. high band pass or low band pass? Low band pass, I think something like that. Um, but I, I'm certainly going to try that because the uh, atmosphere doesn't wobble the infrared light so much. So I'm going to try that with lucky imaging, and I think Orion is bright enough to do lucky imaging in infrared. Um, but yeah, if anyone wants, if anyone's got any ideas or wants to try something, then well, Biscuit, you mentioned two wavelengths that I hadn't heard before as filters: the the magnesium, and you said zinc. Are... Hold on, do I recognize this voice? Is this a Lucin by any chance? Yes. <laughs> hey man, it's elusive, elusive. <laughs> yeah, I dance around. <laughs> How you doing? I got it. Good, good. You know the the skies always call, so yeah, come get back into it. Yeah, good. We finally got your map thing sort of going. Do you remember the oh, fun? Fantastic. Do you remember the fun and games we had last year about privacy <laughs> issues and the map? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad to see you sorted it out. Well, you know. I just, yeah, if you go on to, we've got a website and everything now. So on the home page of the website, which I'm going to bring up now, uh, we've got a little map with the people in the bat. So there we go. Uh, anyway, yeah, sorry, you were saying, sir. Yeah, go on. I, oh, I had some weird wavelengths. Yeah, so I'm shooting the sun in a few, sl I, well, I thought they were unique wavelengths. They're totally not. Um, magnesium, uh, it, I thought was unique, but it isn't quark to a, a magnesium filter. I was trying, I was trying to, I was trying to basically the Fraunhofer wave, the Fraunhofer lines on solar emissions are the line, are the, are the, are where, um, elements in the sun's atmosphere absorb the light, uh, the wavelengths at which elements absorb the light. So magnesium is one. They're also the wavelengths that I believe magnesium emits the light as well. Um, yeah. so, so I'm uh, looking at uh, Ben Spacey's chart here showing uh, the intensity of, of light from the different wavelengths. It's, ben says it's fairly dim. Does that, do our cameras even have sensitivity for those wavelengths? I'm just wondering, can we image with that and is it going to be effective? Well, I'm going to find it been effective out. effective on any target? I'll be able to look up the, uh, the efficiency data for most of the cameras. It's so, I mean, we're going to find out. I'm going to find out, basically. I just figured that if there was one target to do it on, it's Orion. It's so blooming bright. Um, be very interesting. Yes, do it. <laughs> <laughs> but there are other wavelengths as well that I was uh, I was trying to get laser filter la laser. I was trying to get cheap filters basically that were used in lasers, and I, I think um, I think you can get some for lasers that are around the G band on the Fraunhofer line, which I think I believe is actually a number of different elements that all happen to have. Uh, emission and absorption lines at pretty much the same place. Uh, it's quite blue, that one. Um, so I've got a filter for that, but it's it's 10 nanometers big. Anyway, we'll see. I th I think, you know, if we're ever going to experiment, Orion is the one, isn't it? It's so bright, it's so near. Uh, it, the, this is the place to do it. Yeah. And so, so oh. Those are normally used for the sun? Uh, yes, 
Yeah, the it's new orangine, magnesium, calcium. Yeah, calcium. So Barda do a nice little calcium filter, about ten nanometer bandwidth as well. Yeah. Probably, probably the most interesting could be the near infrared, if you, if anyone has the capability. Yeah. So because lot. The dust is much brighter than in optical. Really. Visible. So that's interesting. So I actually got recently. Uh... Oh. I don't know if you can see this here. It's my C14 that I'm hiring. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just put that out on the on the big thing. Look at this. C14. Yeah, I'm hiring it off a guy called Alex Gill for four months. Uh, and uh, Mr. Crazy Physicist have a C14, so I'm hoping to. Well. I probably wait, but I'm going to try and match him. We'll see. Uh, How is the mount doing? The mount? Oh yeah, no, the mount issue isn't very good because um, I am I am getting an old mount uh, jazzed up to take this, um, but it it's been delayed a bit. So uh, I hope it gets jazzed up, you know, quite soon. Otherwise, I'll be hiring this. I won't really be able to use it. Um, but anyway, I was going to say this, uh, I've got this um, planetary camera, uh, it's the ASI 585M, it's a colour camera, but um, it's very good at uh, near-infrared, uh, and in fact, um, you use it in near-infrared, yeah, someone's just someone's just put the, um, hold on, let me go, someone's just put in the back chat, you can just see it here. Uh, that that his two two four also is good in the near infrared. This is actually a little bit better in the near infrared, and the red, green, and blue all uh, detect near infrared. So in fact, it's kind of like a mono camera in near infrared. So I think if we think that dust will show up in near infrared, then this combined with one of those planetary filters. Yeah, someone's just put the. Uh, the, the um, sensitivity of this camera on the on the back cave now, uh, and yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? Um, and uh, but it's so it's like a mono in in near infrared. Um, so yeah, I think that might be really interesting. I'd be really curious. Maybe someone could hazard a guess as as to whether near infrared would be good for the bow shocks or not. Or any of the other things we're thinking about. It'd probably be great. And also with ZWO's new shortwave infrared camera coming out soon, hopefully before Christmas, that could be a, a nice addition if a couple people end up getting one of those. Mm. Well, it would be about so. one of us a million dollars? <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Have they honestly figured out a price on it? Not yet, no. Well, QH wise one is 30k. 30K, yes. Oh Jesus. Hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe Marcus can get one for his big telescope through his university. That would be good. Yeah, well, I'll put in a grant request for one. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, so lots of fun things to try out on this target. It's it's uh, it's a good one, I think. Um, how long have we got? So I'm, well, I suppose we've got another 20 minutes if we want. Um, does anyone want to say anything more about Orion before I just go into a few other bits and bobs and see if we've got any questions? All right. So, uh, quickly, I want to talk about Andromeda. I don't know that we've got a huge amount of data in yet for Andromeda. Um, uh, if I go to... Uh, oh, I can't be bothered. We should... Where have we got it? So, yeah, about 60 hours at the moment, according to our chart. That's okay. I mean, normally... I haven't, I haven't shot it yet. I haven't had a chance. I'm hoping... Uh, before the next full moon comes up after this one, 
I will have a good night and I'll get it with the C14. That's that's my plan. Um, and also, we don't finish with Andromeda for another, uh, I think it's, I don't know, like a month or something. And normally people upload after they've, you know, gathered all the data and then they can stack all their all their subs and just unlo upload one lot. But um, I, some people have uploaded and I um, increased the resolution of the regular reference frame. Now this is potentially not great for folks who have, uh, who have submitted data already because if I go to the, um, if I go to, and it's all on, so if I go to the back Google Drive and the upload download folder uh, and the aligned and the, yeah, so these are all the people I'm afraid who, um, so Teco, they all align to the old reference frame. The problem with the old reference frame, uh, and this is not really anyone's, it's not actually my fault this, I know I sound like a politician, Jack for Life as well, is that um, it's quite a big, it's like three degrees, right? And in order to not make the reference frame enormous, I had a, a scale of about um, three arc seconds, which ended up being too much. So I've increased the, the resolution uh, of the new reference frame. So these, uh, so who's this? I'm not sure who this is. Phaser, I'm afraid. Whoever this person is uh, will need to, and that was probably mine, will need to re-upload. So I'm sorry about that. Or, yeah, no, need to re-upload basically. Uh, did they align? Yeah, it's, it's, it's only the people who aligned obviously to the reference frame. We're now at a higher resolution. We'll see how it works. It's the, the regular reference frame is three degrees at 1.8 arc second resolution. It's bloody huge. That might cause us a headache later on. Anyway, that's what I've done. Um, anyone want to say anything about Andromeda? Uh, while we're on the and subject of Andromeda. Uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of lucky imaging experimentation with it. Um, Ooh. Because it's really bright. Mm. So it's a good target for that. Um, yeah, and and found some mixed results. Uh, let's see if I have a link to it. I posted them too, just for reference. Message link. And uh, I guess some of the findings I tried N Nina lucky imaging tool. I tried fire capture auto stackert as well as. Um, uh nina plus subframe selector um and finding very interesting things uh pros and cons to each of the tools um do you want me to do a quick sum up or yes please so uh the, when you said nina lucky imaging tool what's that so there's a plugin that just came out um uh in the the beta version of nina where you can do a lucky imaging it does a region of interest crop uh, it's a little bit more time efficient, but it doesn't show you the preview as often. Uh, that's how it's a little more data efficient. Ah, that's good, because that was stopping me from using Nina, basically. The fact that I was having to shoot full frame previously. Anyway, yeah, go on. How did you find it? So I'm on, I'm, uh, I'm on your, I've opened your link up so people yeah. can see, which if you want me to go to a particular frame, there's three pictures I can see here. If you right. Want to... The best of these three were the first picture, really. Uh, that that set you're looking at was fire capture plus auto stacker. So it's uh, was it? Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, and in this case, uh, between one second subs, half a second, and and quarter of a second subs, I found the one second best, at least for my setup. Um, but when I, what is the word? Yeah, when I when I called i use the word call where you, you take the top five percent top 10 that's what you're seeing in the top yeah. two images and then 50 and 90 respectively i was looking at the differences and there's a full with half max difference of course but there's also a depth and a stacking difference so there's some strange artifact you can see when i called too hard so it's really important to look at the different try try all of them and see what's best for your data because there's a lot of variance so uh did you try stacking in um, like a normal 
stacking software. Yes. Uh, well, with this data, um, no, because uh, it was Sierra based in this case. The dot, because oh, right. the two, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I could extract the frames mm. and then do it that way, but uh, subframe selector um, also gives good results as well. So, but that takes a lot longer. That I guess that's the big takeaway I have from this using fire capture or auto stacker. It's just so much more time and image efficient. Um, but it's harder to it's harder to deal with darks and flats really with all of them. There's not a good solution for it. You just have to take the time to, to do that. And I just do an experimentation first. So. I need to ask what Mr. Crazy Physicist used. I, I actually just when I did it uh, last year, I just um, I used PixInsight to get rid of my really crappy frames. Uh, and then I used I just used uh, I didn't use AutoStacker. I used the uh, Astro Pixel processor, um, and if, and because AutoStacker is going to give you know if when AutoStacker cocks up, it's going to give you these artifacts, which unfortunately does ruin it, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Then. Um... But these these uh, look more subs, two hundred and fifty three subs. So we were shooting. I mean, I was shooting like ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand subs. So, um, so I guess, you know, if I'm taking 10% of those, 10% of 20,000 is still what, 2000. So I'd be completely fine. Wouldn't I, uh, with, uh, with auto stacker, because look, this is, you know, you're at 450 subs here and you're, you're, you haven't got any artifacts in that one. I don't think. Yeah. That came out great. Yeah. And then, um, if you scroll down, I did a different set with subframe selector um i don't even know below. oh is it the bottom one no just keep going scroll down a little bit further oh, all to right the next set <laughs> uh right there did these two these three images are interesting so this was the other approach using nina um and i yeah there's some dust motes but anyway yeah we, we don't that's <laughs> fine we don't mind yeah. yeah uh but what's interesting take a look at the next one i compared it to the photo that nasa put on their site to kpno their four meter telescope and aligned it and this just roughly and i was shocked i thought it was a bad stack but you look at this and you can see the details mm. yeah it's very good it's very good and actually um a few weeks ago there was one chap who was quite active uh looking at andromeda I'm really bad with names. If someone reminds me, I'd be grateful of his name. Um, and he, what he did was, I think he, uh, in order to see the, because you've got a problem, haven't you? Because it gets so bright at the core. It's yeah. actually quite hard to see the the darker clouds yeah. around it. Um, so he, I think he did something like blur, blur it all out and, and like inverted the blur so that, uh basically it flat it kind of like um it 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 makes the bright core much darker and it makes the dimmer out a bit much less dark right yeah if you could do that progressively that'd be huge so take a yeah. look at the next one which is a video describing exactly what you just i don't know how we reveal it so we'll play that little video there it's short um and this is just uh, sweeping through so you can see the core details. So it's in the data. It's just like, how do we reveal it? And this is the kind of post-processing we might want to do. Yeah. I mean, there's something simple. Use, use a couple tools in Photoshop to bring that out. If you really want, send it to me. I can I can actually play with it. See, see if that I can bring dark that bit? There's a yeah. dark bit on the top. Well, yeah. there's another we... thing you can do too. I use because um, I was playing a little bit with some of my Andromeda. My Andromeda is just not worth saving, but you can actually gradually mask. There's a there's a tool in um, PixInsight called Game that allows you to do the ellipsoid masks. You can slowly mask and just start dragging your um, your curves down as you go towards the center. You know what I mean? So you'll 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 be able to to do exactly what you're doing in this video and flatten it out. But it just take a long time. That's, that's the problem is it's tedious i would i mean i have done something a bit similar actually uh and i if i just bring this video back to where it's all bright uh i i, I take a frame i go through in in well i use affinity not photoshop and i use the clone tool and i rub out the bright stars right so i i i clone 
I clone the, the, a similar patch of sky. I rub out the bright stars. Uh, and then when there are obvious dark clouds, I use the light and uh, you can have light. You can, when you use clone tool, you can make it, you, you can lighten it or darken it. I lighten where the dark bits are. Basically to get rid of all the bright bits and dark bits. Then I blur it by about a hundred pixels, right? And then I have uh, that, you know, that um, uh, I have a layer which is getting brighter and brighter towards the middle uh, in exactly like the that, same way as the right. picture. And I subtract that layer from the actual image uh, and you can change the percentage oh. of how much you subtract it. And that will give you, that will do like, you know, that will, that will kind of, in one hit, it'll give you what you've done a loose in with, as you, um, as you were dragging the brightness up and down on this video. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. And then at the it's end, such a bright target. <laughs> at the end, you can use that same sort of blurry mask thing, brightness mask that you, you created. At the end, you can use it to put back the gradient of light. Uh, but you probably won't want to do it quite as much uh, because everything will bleed out, obviously. But just to make it to, to make it more go back to being more natural again uh, after you've brought out all the details. Yeah, okay. that's all I had to share. So. That's awesome. Have, Thank you. I have a little um, comment to uh, the to the um, um, with the darks and outer stack art. Um, you can use PIPP to use flats and darks um, for your um, for your images, and then out of P uh, PIPP you get out a CR that you can stack afterwards. You can calibrate the the your images for using Auto Stacker. Yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. Yeah, I guess it just is the reminder of whatever tool you use to take cropped darks, not just darks. <laughs> right. Yeah. Same for flats, but I don't think that matters as much because when we do region of interest, you're usually looking at the center of the image where there's less of a vignette or whatever. I mean, I do all my, I do everything cropped. I do everything. I do my bias. I do my flats. I do my everything in that same cropped. Uh, mode uh, and the flats are just the flats are always the things that screw me in the end if I haven't got them just right yeah can't you just crop the flats identically in the field of region as the lights that should not be a problem in the theoretically yes it, it is very much theoretically though I find that anything that can potentially bugger a flat up will you you, you got those dust motes yeah they're elusive right uh you know you you uh, they're just so annoying if you if you get the flats when the telescope hasn't even moved i'm actually thinking of spending a few hundred quid and getting one of those professional looking uh you know flat light panels and just and just doing it immediately after i've shot maybe maybe just you have Maybe you just have to clean the optics because I don't ever have issues with my flat with my flats because I don't have that many dust donuts on my flats. I don't know. That's you, maybe you've no idea how much I hate you right now, Stefan. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna open up my filter wheel tonight and I'm gonna remove all the little dust motes. We're gonna start fresh. <laughs> well, good luck, everyone, removing those dust motes. And if you get a good way of doing it, then please let me know. Yeah valuable data right there yeah okay well that's awesome elusin thank you uh and do we have uh we do have like um bat targets uh because i think discord has moved on a bit in the last year we've now got a channel called bat targets if i can find it uh Where's the blooming bat targets gone? Anyway, we've got bat targets with uh, uh, one of the... Um... Oh, come on, brain. I've had one Guinness. I can't blooming remember anything. It's got a, a subsection anyway. I've got the name all about Andromeda. And people... It'd be great if people do things with Andromeda to put it in there. 
Oh, here we go. Back targets. I found it finally. Um, seems like there's hardly anything in Andromeda, though. I know lots of people were doing stuff. Oh, here we go. 400, there is 432 things about Andromeda. So yeah, do if you if you do get to work on any of these targets and you, you find something interesting, yeah, people, oh, here we go. Yeah, loads of people have been doing it. Great. Um, then do uh, tell everyone about it in the in the in the back targets. Uh, what's it called? This thing, uh, this little um, module of back targets. I've forgotten the word. Someone help me out. It's a thread. It's not a thread, is it? Forum. Oh, forum. forum. It's a forum, and the the thing is are called I don't know. Posts. It's a post, forum. isn't it? Post. I think. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Obviously, I need. Obviously, I need to call it a night already. Yeah. Uh, so that's Andromeda. Anyone else want to say anything about Andromeda? I love. I love that. By the way, thank you very much. Um, any more about Andromeda? Okay. Anyone got any questions in general about like uploading, downloading things that aren't working in the website? Anything else? Uh, some of us have been working on the. Lucky Imaging Tool. Oh, yes. So I was wondering whether, because uh, I couldn't see Lekka uh, yep. Who I can't see who you are just because there's quite a few people here. Who are you? Uh, C. Constantine. Oh, you've been yep. working on so, this uh, as well. Yeah, also go on. has been spending quite a bit of time on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so what it should do is help you filter out files that are just no good at the night uh, while you're imaging. Right, to help you save storage space um, so you don't run out of space on maybe your laptop or your mini PC. Uh, and there's a there's a thread about it, and I think there's a forum up towards the top, and what we could use are testers. So people to, to go download the utility. Uh, it's on my GitHub. It's a, there's a release. There's a, an EXE. Yep. Okay, so in Lucky Imaging Chat, the forum, Lucky Imaging Chat, there is a what I'm calling a post, but I think I've got the name wrong. And here near the bottom, Constantine has put his uh, link to GitHub. Yep. Let's, let's have a look at it, shall we? So what do I do? What do I need to do in order to make it work? I'm not. I, I, everyone throws GitHub at me. It scares me because it <laughs> feels like it's like all oh, lots of coding and stuff. Do I download I, that I source think... zip code zip there? No, no, I think that's the wrong link. Um... Oh. Uh, if you just click on the lucky imaging tool after my name in the upper left or go back. So all these are, are more direct links. Um go ahead and click on one of those. So where do I go? This this just click on one of them. Yeah, just anyway. Okay. Them. We'll post a better link in a in a bit, but once you click on that, I'll have you click on another thing. Okay, so in the upper left of the, the screen there's a lucky imaging tool left. Oh screen. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So so this is the, the repo. On the right you can see there's a section for releases. That will always have the latest release at the top. Um, I can't here my mouse over thing. Yeah, there you go. So if you click on that, yeah, now there's Ooh, an EXE there. It's an EXE. That is exciting. Well, let's so get a that now. Utility, a little text box will pop up, ask you some questions, and uh, and then it will start live filtering files for you. Well, uh, run <laughs> yeah, anyway. It's not signed or anything. Do you feel lucky, punk? <laughs> All right, great. Uh, this is set up for fits files only. Okay, so 3.7. I put in my uh, size, right? Yep. Focal length. Uh, let's go for that. What should I say? How many stars should I want to detect? Five, maybe? Um, I, I think 100 is what the... Um test my scope channel uses i'm gonna go for 50 because i don't get very many stars when i lucky image fraction of the width to keep oh so is this is uh cropping yeah so it'll do cropping for you if you can only do full frame but you don't want to keep the whole frame ah uh, okay all right 70 there we go fraction of the height to keep all oh, right so that's the, sort of the same thing essentially yeah uh enter the file path Right, so essentially I need to um, go to, like, 
find my folder and uh, and copy the I do the I copy up here don't I um right okay so I won't do that now yeah but um and so after I've done that um next select the full width uh, in arc seconds threshold over which all images will be deleted okay so what I'm getting is if I put uh, like 1.5 arc seconds here right maybe I go a bit higher actually maybe I go 1.9 arc seconds uh, 1.9 right basically does this program look at any fits file that lands in that folder and delete and it, it checks the fits file to determine the um the full width half maximum of the 50 or however many stars I've asked it to detect. And if those stars on average are above, in my case, 1.9 arc seconds, uh, it deletes them. Is that right? That is correct. Very cool. And if they're below, they will uh, do that scaling. Um, 70 is an exciting answer, though, for those, because those are not percentages. It's uh, a range of 0 to 1. Ah, so it should be 0 0.7, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But so, but that kind of uh, like that's a little confusing, maybe. So maybe that kind of feedback would be good to get, um, and yeah. actually have people use it live, right? Like while imaging, and then tell us uh, parts of it that don't work well, or yeah. things that are awkward to use, um, things to improve, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I do find just because I crop anyway, quite a lot, and you have to, when you when you're getting twenty thousand frames. You do have to crop quite a lot. Uh, I wouldn't that um, fraction of the width to keep or height to keep. Oh, so what, hold on. So what happens? Ah, OK, sorry. So I don't need to crop anymore. Right. So the idea is right. this on my good frames, it'll crop it for me. And on my bad frames, it will throw it all away. So it doesn't yep. use that display. You, you can always put one in for that and it won't crop. Right. One in and it won't crop, yeah. Because actually cropping is quite useful because it, it also means you download the images faster. And when you're shooting an image every half second... Um, it, it's it, it's it, after it, it, the... It's cropping from the file that's already on disk. So yeah. it's not going to help your USB transport. No, so I suppose what I'm saying is it's better to crop at source. Uh, because yeah. otherwise, unless you've got an amazing setup, uh, you're wasting a lot of valuable time downloading a large image, fits image from your camera. So uh, I would, I just saying that. Not this is kind of like not to do with your program, but if you're, if you're lucky imaging, you you will need to crop. So I was very pleased that Elucin told me about Nina's plugin. Uh, that allows you to crop as you're imaging. Uh, Elucin, do you need to download that specially from somewhere, that plugin? You just need the uh, advanced Nina, uh, uh, the, sorry, the beta version of Nina, and then you can just go to plugins and it's already there. You don't have to go to a website. All right. Okay, cool. Good to know. Uh, thank you so much, Constantine. I thank you so much for your work and thanks you, Vikram, as well. And thank you... Uh, Lekka Becke, um for helping out. I've I've chatted with Lekka Becke. Lekka Becke was the chap who um, who made it so that uh, if I can get it up, where's our where's our site gone? Uh, anyway, if you if you go to our bat website, uh, Big Amateur, I'll just do it now, uh, just because I want to thank Lekka Becke properly for this. Uh, this login with Discord function, uh, Lecky Becky sorted that out. So you'll automatically be able to log in uh, with Discord and then you'll be able to download and upload and also go to the members area. Uh, and uh, in the members area, oh, I'm not logged in at the moment. I need to log in. But in the members area, you can register your scopes. Uh, and part of registering your scopes is... Uh, I think in order to in order to do that, you have to put in your email. And if you put in your email, then you will get um, updates from me uh, about the bat. You'll also get Astro Biscuit updates in general. Um, also, I'm going to add a little uh, link in the members area to just get the emails so you don't have to register your scope. But registering your scope is cool, partly 
because I want to see where you all live. And if you register a scope, you need to tell us roughly where you live. And then a little dot appears uh, on the um, here, which I like, basically. So, uh, hey, I just popped up. Good. Sorry, who popped up? I was just saying, I, I just did the register my scope. I popped up in North Carolina. There was awesome. no dot there earlier. Awesome. So you're somewhere around here, aren't you? Is that you? Yeah, not right there. That dot right there is very close to me. Okay. Very good. Okay. Any more for any more before we uh, knock it on the head? No. Well, I was going to mention... Oh, yeah. Oh, I was just going to mention, uh, we're still dealing with some uh, mirror issues with our 70-centimeter uh, scope. Uh, yeah. I was mentioning it to you probably about a month ago. Yeah, yeah. We were trying to get data going in on that, and we're still struggling to get the images to come out sharp, but uh, working on it, and I think in the next two months, it's going to be nice and sharp. So we'll be coming in hot soon. Awesome. I mean, I think all of us know exactly where you're coming from. Uh, the number of different things that go wrong is really, really surprising. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm feeling that. I'm setting up various new scopes. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I had triangular stars. Uh, <laughs> I had triangular stars because... Pinched optics? Yeah, on my mirror. Uh, Fun. And uh, I've changed any, oh, just like, it's so much better to just to buy the scope from the shop, I reckon, because they've gone <laughs> through all it. of the, you know, mix matching everything from different manufacturers. The mirror ends up being too fat for the cell, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it's all, an, it's all a horrible nightmare. So I understand, I understand, especially with the 70 centimeter mirror i mean blimey that's and it was uh handmade too oh yeah yeah oh ooh, it's tough really tough have you are you able to check the mirror's quality uh so they did um a bunch of optical testing on it back when they browned it back in 92 uh but I don't think there's been any optical tests done on it since it was coded and installed 30 years ago. So, so. yeah, you, I mean, the, yeah. So they, I mean, my mirror that I'm getting trying, was getting triangular stars on. It's amazing how uh, little pressure on those mirrors uh, from the mirror cell makes it makes an mm -hmm. impact. Yeah. Our mirror is it's a three inch thick zero dur cell, so it's it, it definitely uh, has. If if we pinch it, it'll throw up some issues. But that's one thing is that it's uh, it takes so much pressure to actually bend it that a lot of the times you can start pinching the optics and you don't even realize it. But then they're messing with your photos and you start zooming in and it's hard to really see it until you go into the processing. Yeah. stage it's so yeah annoying. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. But. cool anyway good luck thank uh, you mr crazy i just do you mind if i can i just i just wanted to pick your brain about what uh stacking software you use for lucky imaging um i'm using fire capture and auto stacker so you're using auto stacker as well okay yeah. Okay. So if there are brights, not oversaturated stars, it works actually quite well with stacking. Okay. All right. Well, at one day we'll probably need to get a lesson uh, uh, on on what settings to put auto stacker on for lucky imaging, but it won't be tonight because it's it's you know <laughs> it's time to watch match of the day basically. Um, I wish I wish I had another Guinness. This is the last one. So annoying. Uh, any more for any more before we it's been love it's been an absolute pleasure hearing from you folks actually this evening it's really interesting uh, i'm glad we've got such a nice bunch clever bunch uh on board um and i see some old old faces as well in there but it's getting on a bit so i'm not going to say hello right now um but any any other questions uh any problems to do with 
the bat, particularly in websites and uploading and downloading or anything like that? Or are we good? Sounds like we're good. Okay, so I'm going to bugger off now. I'm going to watch Match of the Day. Uh, you're welcome to hang around here. Um, it might be, I don't know whether they will, but the Batman, Steve, might hang around a bit. Ben might hang around a bit. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, if you've got questions, it might be worth just hanging on a bit or just, I don't know, carry on chatting. But uh, f as for me, uh, it's over and out. So thank you very much and I'll see you probably in like a month. I would have thought, unless some really cool stuff happens, in which case I'll call a bat meeting a bit earlier. All right, thank you all. Take care. And, uh, okay, good night. Night, night. Yeah, good night.